Have you ever wanted to create dynamic YouTube videos showcasing both yourself and your screen? Well, in the next 30 seconds, I'm going to introduce you to Filmora, where I'm going to show you exactly how to do screen recordings and picture-in-picture -picture content effortlessly. It's perfect for tutorials, reaction videos, or any content where you need to be the star and the guide. So this is a really simple tutorial. Now, I'm just going to launch Wondershare Filmora 13. Now the process hasn't really changed too much over the last few versions of Filmora, so if you're on an older version then it's not going to be too far off what I'm going to show you now anyway. Or if you're using a different editor and you're thinking of moving to Filmora 13 then this is how simple it is to do screen recordings. Now there's two ways we can do this and I'll show you both. One is when we open we get this splash screen and it's got our kind of last videos in there and it's also got a few options. In the middle here you've got a screen recorder so we can click on that and it'll take us directly in to the screen recording settings. Now rather than do that, I'm just gonna show you how we would get there if we were um, already in a project. So I'm gonna click on new project. Now, if you've never seen Filmora before, this can look confusing, but don't, it's not as daunting as you think. And I've got other videos that help simplify this. But at the top left, when we've got media selected here, we also have this button here that says record. And you've got record from webcam, record PC screen, record voiceover. Voiceover is audio only. Webcam and PC screen um, are similar, but we're just going to go with record PC screen. Now, that option that I told you before, this is exactly what it would have brought up if we'd have gone directly in from the splash screen. So that's why I didn't want to show you both ways. These are our main options. Now, the first thing we've got is the screen. So you can record the full screen. And if you look closely, you should see kind of a dashed uh, greeny blue, the Filmora colors kind of line going around um, my screen. If we wanted to record just say a web page, then we can open up um, a web page. Let's open up YouTube. And I've not got that kind of maximum screen, so that's fine. That'll kind of demonstrate what I want to show. If you click on this drop down, you've got custom target window. So target window, as you move your mouse around, you can hopefully see some red dashes. Then red dashes is showing you the window it will select. So if I click here, it then selects this and that is going to be our recording screen now that's really helpful but the one thing to take note of is if you're halfway through a screen recording and you then go to perhaps a bigger window you've got to remember that you were only recording that box so you might need to expand it like pause the recording and expand it now you can also manually just click and drag and change the size and that's pretty much what custom does so with custom you basically set it yourself so you've got loads of flexibility there. You can even type in the dimensions if you really want. Microphone, pretty obvious. Um, I've got two microphones connected at the moment, but one of them I'm using to actually do this demo. The other one is the uh, webcam microphone, which is awful quality, but it's just to show you. So your microphones will show in there. And if you didn't want to have a mic microphone, you can just press mute. I did wonder then, I clicked that thinking, will they be able to hear me? But yeah, I'm recording in a different application at the moment. so. You can mute your microphone. System audio is like Windows, Mac noises, that kind of thing. It's the um, alerts, errors. If you double click on something and it's the wrong thing, it might give you an alert or a beep. So it's whether you want to record them. I don't because I think it just adds a little bit too much noise, especially if you've got like email alerts and stuff pinging up. This one is your webcam. So in here, you'll have noticed um, when I started talking a second ago, this picture of this Beautiful young fella um, is down in the bottom corner here, so um, we can kind of expand that if we want and move it around. Now, you have got some options if we click on these three dots. You can change the resolution, you can change the shape. So that's how it originally records, and then it puts this circular mask around it. So if you don't want the circular one, you want more of a, a rectangle or square or whatever it is, you can use that. I'll put it on circular, then you can see less of the junk that's right behind me. Um, and also you've got this which changes direction. Now the reason for that is, as you can see there, the natural recording of this webcam is actually that way, but that looks like I'm looking off screen. So this flick works really well. I'm looking back into the, back into the screen. Um, so there are your basic options. If you're happy with that, you can just press this red button and start recording. But I'm gonna show you the advanced stuff as well. So I'm gonna just click on this little arrow next to settings. Now with Filmora 13, they added a feature that I really like. It's so simple and basic, and most other screen recorders do this anyway, so I'm glad they added it. But you've got two options, camera screen merging, camera screen splitting. 
If I hover over that, it'll tell you what it means. So basically merging is where the computer screen and the camera footage, i.e. the picture of me, emerged onto a single track. That's the way it used to be. Now this is how I much prefer it, camera screen splitting. What that does is it gives us two different tracks and this will all make sense in a second when I show you what the end result looks like. But then two separate tracks means that um, we can remove the, pic the picture of me at a certain point or we've got more flexibility because we've got two tracks to edit. So I would use camera screen splitting. The name is the name of the file that's gonna show up in your editor. I'll be honest, I'm lazy, I just leave them as the default. If you wanted to, you could change it. So it's a little bit more organized and makes sense. And again, save to is just where on your machine is it gonna put this screen recording. So if you've got um, a certain drive on your laptop or PC, you wanna put your screen recordings, I just use it as default. Frame rate, it will usually revert to whatever your camera is capable of, and I just leave that. But if you wanted to change it, you can. And quality, I always go for higher, but again, if you're low on resource and you want to just reduce the quality and the size of the files, then by all means you can. Countdown, so countdown is, um, I've set it to one second because I'm impatient, but let's say you want to kind of take a breath, compose yourself before you dive into your screen recording. You can have a little three second countdown. I don't really see the point because I tend to just cut the start of the recording off anyway and it didn't need a countdown. Re um, record timer, as it suggests, if you want this to stop itself after an hour, you can. Um, quite, can't quite think of any practical uses for that maybe some form of computer-based time-lapse, I don't know. I'd never ever use that. The mouse, so as I'm moving this mouse around, um, you can basically select, you can basically put this setting on here and you can choose so that when I click on anything, it will actually show um, a little circle effect so that people can follow along and they can recognize when you're clicking. Equally, you can also have the click actually come through on Filmora as well, but you do have to have the system audio turned on. See, if I just turn this on here, it actually lets us select that. If I turn system audio off, it's not on there. So that's what I mean, that's what your system audio is. Um, again, I don't tend to add sounds, but I do add these effects as well. If you don't want any effects, then you can just click on hide mouse gestures. But I don't think, I don't think the other one, I don't think this one's too kind of intrusive. Next, you've got your hotkeys. So to pause is F10, and it's worth pausing if, for example, you're gonna go away and make yourself um, a brew. There's no point in leaving it for 10 minutes recording and using up all that space and all that extra editing. You may as well pause it. Um, start, stop is F9. Now, you can put anything you want in here. This is basically saying, choose whatever keys work for you. Uh, GPU acceleration, so if you've got quite a, a beefy PC or laptop that's got a graphics card that can almost make this process easier and faster and throw some resource at it, you can do. I don't tend to because um, I don't ever find it needs to really. The um, machine I've got seems to cope well enough without, so I leave that off. So once you've set these once, generally you're probably not going to change them much. Um, the main thing you're going to change is these ones each time depending on what you're recording. So we're ready, we're ready to record. I'm just gonna change that back to full screen and I'm gonna press record and you should see that timer that we just set as well. So there you go, you've got the three second countdown. Now, believe it or not, this is actually recording now. So I can scroll down here and my, my shorts feed is full of videos that my kids watch because they constantly take my phone. So they've absolutely ruined my shorts feed with utter garbage. But if I click on search here, you'll see in a second that, um, do you remember what I was telling you before about the, the little mouse effect in cursor? Um, so. So there you go. So I'm now gonna press F10 if you remember right, that was to stop the video. But if you ever can't remember what the buttons were, if you go into your system tray, you've got this icon and you can just click on pause, stop, whatever you need in there as well. So I'm just gonna stop. That then takes us into Filmora. It leaves this part open, so I'm just gonna close that and then drag the video down. So you'll notice that we've got three different tracks in here. Now this is what I was explaining before. In this track, that's this one. So that's the picture in picture, that's me. This one is the screen. If we'd have left it on merging before, we would have one track and these two would be combined. So there'd be no way that you could add any different effects or resizing or anything to the picture in picture one. You'd be stuck with how that actually is. Whereas as it is now, if we want, we can scale that, we can change the position, 
we can change different things. We can put some shadow on. We can, there you go, I can put like a drop shadow on. We can change the background. We can do all sorts with that anyway. So I prefer to have the flexibility of having two different ones. Now, if you ever wanted to hide that, you can just click on this little eye and it'll hide it anyway. Then we've got the screen and we've also got the audio that we recorded. Now, I'm just gonna quickly skim through. So hopefully, if I press play, and I'm just gonna mute this because it's gonna sound a mess of wise. If I press play here, if you look around this area, you'll see them mouse effects that we were looking at before. So can you see where I've been clicking? You've got these little orange dots that kind of um, explode and disappear. One important thing to remember when you're doing uh, screen recordings and you've got multiple tracks like this is let's say you want to cut a bit of that video out, you're gonna edit it out because it isn't quite right. Well, if you cut part of this video, you always need to make sure that you're kind of cutting all three so that they're all cut at the same point. Otherwise, your video and audio and picture are gonna be out of sync. So let's, let's say you just cut one bit out and it was a bit where you said, now what I want you to do is click on this button. Well, that click on this button may be completely out of sync with what your lips are doing, what your audio is kind of feeding back. So it just adds a little bit more um, attention needed when you're doing the editing process, really. Um, so just, just bear that in mind. But other than that, that is exactly how you record your screen and picture in picture in Filmora. Really easy, super simple, and I hope that helped. And if you want more videos like this, make sure you hit subscribe. Filmora is ridiculously easy for any new video creator to learn, which is good as there's so much that we need to consider, which is why I also created the next video that is going to help you create and publish videos and grow your channel faster.